Hello everybody, got a good one for you today. I have surveyed hundreds of people and asked them, what are the biggest mistakes you made as a pool owner? I also asked uh, tons of pros, what are the biggest mistakes you've seen pool owners make early on? And I put this list together so that you guys can hopefully learn from their mistakes and not make them yourselves. Hopefully save you some money, save you some time, save you some headache, whatever. Um, but again, if you if you don't want to listen to my spiel, just hop to the end um, where I run down the whole list for you. First and foremost, a big one was not checking the multi-port valve position. The multi-port valve, as you know, sits either on top of your filter or to the side. And that's what we use to turn from filter to backwash to waste. A lot of people reported that they might have backwashed the pool and forgot to change it, kick the pump back on, and... They simply drained half of their pool because they didn't remember to check or put it back into filter. So that was a big one. Refilling your pool, but not turning off the fill hose or forgetting to turn off the fill hose. Waking up the next morning, water everywhere. This one seems to happen all the time to a lot of different people. Not a big deal, you know, but to combat this, maybe get yourself an automatic uh, pull or a hose timer, hook it up to your hose, keep your hose right by your pool, keep it on the edge, the timer kicks it on, fills the pool, kicks it off, problem solved. Mixing chemicals. If you're worried about space in your shed or you're storing chemicals wherever they are, make sure they're labeled you keep the proper safety labels on, that you know what's in them, and more importantly, that we do not combine chemicals into the same bucket. Just because you think it's, oh, it's both chlorine, well, I'm here to tell you, two different types of chlorine mixed together go kaboom. All right, big problems. We don't ever mix chlorine. We don't mix chlorine and acid. There's several chemical combinations we cannot mix together, and it can it's really important that we know them and that we're also storing them correctly so kids aren't getting into them. Turning on and off valves. If you're turning off your valves ahead of your pump in order to clean your pump basket, you gotta remember to turn those valves back on, okay? Check them, double check them, triple check them. Do not run your pump with valves closed, valves closed off. It will strangle your pump, it'll burn it up. If it can't get water, it can't run. Pumps aren't designed to pull air, they're designed to pull water, okay? To combat this, I always keep a little label maker with me. If I go to a customer's house and they don't have labels on their different um, valves and stuff, I print one off, I stick it right on there, I let them know exactly what each pipe goes to, what each valve does, and make it really, really easy for them. And you can do the same thing. Sometimes if it's white pipe, you just take a little Sharpie and make a mark on there of where the valve should be, what this one does, what this one does, what this one does. That way you know when you're turning, what you're turning off, when you're turning it off, those kinds of things. You get what you pay for. So if you're looking for something online, because you want a cheaper option, remember you get what you pay for. And this holds true in the pool industry. If it seems to be too good to be true, chances are it is. Don't skimp, don't look for the cheapest product. The difference between internet models and what your pool service guy can offer you are night and day. They might be the same price, but the pool service, his quality of equipment is gonna be 10 times better than that of what you can find on the internet, I promise you. And it's gonna have a warranty, and if something goes wrong, he can come out and troubleshoot it and he'll fix it for you. And if not, he'll remove it and put a brand new one on there for you. Online, it's kinda, you're done, okay? Not to mention, you don't know where that's being produced. It could be produced overseas somewhere with really cheap parts. It's just, if you're trying to save a buck, it's you're in the wrong place because you're not gonna save a buck when you're talking about pool equipment. And if you do, you're gonna end up spending more money way down the road. Don't do it, okay? Spend the extra money for quality equipment. It will make your life so much easier. I promise you. Not checking water level, not checking chem levels. 
You have spent so much money on your pool. Why would you not test your water with a good test kit to know what your levels are? If your levels aren't good, you're gonna have staining, you're gonna have etching, scaling, corrosion, all the above, some of the above, whatever. It's not hard to do. If you don't wanna pay for a test kit, take it to the pool store, they'll test it for free. Do not try to be cheap, okay? If you want to be cheap, don't spend $50,000 to $100,000 on a pool. It's not going to work out in your favor. Check your levels. Check your chem levels. Buy uh, a good test kit. Check your salt levels. Make sure you know what's going on with your pool. It's not only good for your health, but it's good for your equipment. It's good for your pool shell. It's good for everything. Leaving it, not good. Now let's hop over to what the professionals had to say about what are the biggest mistakes pool owners make not balancing their chemicals all right not calling and attempting to fix something themselves time and time again people try to fix things themselves it doesn't work out save yourself the time just call a professional to come in and do it here's a favorite flex tape does not fix leaks i can promise you flex tape does not fix leaks Caulking will not fix leaks. None of that pool putty stuff, I promise you, it doesn't work. It might work for a couple minutes. It might work for a few days. It's not going to fix your problem. I promise you, we have tried everything. The only way to fix these leaks is to cut the pipe out and redo it in most cases. I promise. Promise. We've tried it. If it was easy and if we could put a little glue or tape on it, we would. But it doesn't work. Not clearing the throat of the skimmer when you're cleaning out your pump baskets. Again, you should be cleaning out your pump basket and your skimmer baskets daily, every couple of days. You need to keep an eye on them. Um, but when you're cleaning out your pump basket, if you pull that thing out and you don't clear the debris from the throat of the skimmer, as soon as you pull that basket out, all that stuff gets sucked right down into your, into your system and it's going to flow right into your pump. So... They suggest either turning your pump off when you're emptying your baskets or make sure you get all the debris out of the throat of the skimmer when you pull that basket out. I always recommend doing the skimmers first, then go to your pump basket. Otherwise, you may have to backtrack and go back and do your pump basket again. If you're adding chemicals that he might have added yesterday or he plans on adding tomorrow, you know, the lack of communication is huge. If you're messing with valves, you're changing flow settings, whatever, you need to communicate that to your pool tech. That'll save you big, big uh, troubles down the road. Not checking your baskets, not cleaning your filter enough or too much. I already mentioned earlier, sometimes people backwash too often. You want your filter to be a little bit dirty, but not too dirty. So there is that fine line. Don't clean it too much. Don't backwash too often but also backwash often enough. So, you know, go based on that pressure. When your pressure jumps up 10 PSI, backwash. These last two, I kind of get a kick out of. They said letting dogs swim, and I can attest to this. I have some customers that let their dogs swim in the pool. Hey, it's your pool. If you want to let them swim, that's on you. I, I don't care. Um, it does really really impact your filter and your baskets and stuff it clogs them up like crazy so they'll have to be cleaned a lot more it tears up your chlorine but whatever it's your pool you want to let your dog swim i don't care uh, and lastly not paying the pool man on time uh, that's a case by case thing I, you don't pay your pool man i don't care it doesn't affect me at all so hey to each their own Listening to your neighbor's advice over professional advice. And same goes for internet and friends and whatever. But you're paying somebody and somebody who has spent 30 years, 20 years, whatever, and does this for a living. If you are not going to listen to what they tell you and you listen to your neighbor two doors down who has a pool and has had one pool for you know five years, that's on you. Okay? In my mind, I know a lot more about pools than my next door neighbor that has a pool. I mean, and he might know a lot about his pool, but I do this for a living, all right? And so do these pros. 
we know a lot about pools. Don't listen to your neighbor's advice over your pool pros. I promise you it won't work out well for you. Um, and same goes for the internet. I mean, there are some good sources like this one, of course, but make sure if you're reading something online, double check it. Don't take it as uh, the holy grail. Check the sources, make sure they're accurate, do more research into the topic. If you notice that something is not right, something you see a little leak, a little trickle, a huge mistake is letting it be one or trying to fix it yourself. If you don't know what you're doing, this can be disastrous and end up costing you so much more money down the road. Sometimes these little tiny things, you call somebody out, it might cost you 100 bucks, 120 bucks, whatever, but it might save you thousands down the road. If that little trickle turns into a major, you know, pipe burst and you end up burning up all your equipment or whatever, don't wait. Call somebody, get things taken care of right then and there. Turning the pump off or not running the pump enough. I know a lot of pool pros that say, the customers go out and turn the pump off because it's noisy or they're trying to save money or whatever, but then they'll call and complain that the pool's dirty. Well, you simply can't have your pool sparkling clean if you refuse to run your pump all the time. I've also heard people say that customer complains that it's raining and is worried the pump's gonna get wet or whatever goes out, turns it off because they don't want the pump running in the rain. I, whatever, all right? I, I promise you your pump's designed to get wet. It can deal with the rain, not a big deal. You gotta run your pump. All right, and our real quick synopsis of all the answers on the pool side, pool owner side. Leaving the fill hose in too long. Not adjusting the multi-port valve to the correct setting. Not balancing pool. Not tightening down clamps enough. Not leaving valves turned on or off and burning up your pump. Not adjusting freeze protect, making sure it kicks on. Buying wrong parts off the internet, buying anything off the internet, buying cheap quality equipment, running booster pump without main pump on, running an old pump and not upgrading to a variable speed pump, not checking the water level, mixing chemicals, using a bad test kit or not testing enough, not checking your salt level or any chemical levels for that matter, not filtering the water when filling from fill hose not dealing with staining quick enough, attempting to fix things myself. On the pro side, here are the answers. Balancing chemicals, calling before you attempt to fix anything. Flex tape does not fix leaks. Listen to your, do not listen to your neighbor's advice over a pro. Changing valve settings and forgetting to change them back. Running your pump dry. Not clearing the third of the skimmer when cleaning. Turning the pump off not running pump enough, adjusting things on pool without telling tech, not checking the pump baskets or filter baskets, not cleaning the filter enough or too much, not adjusting the water level, mixing chemicals, being too cheap and buying cheap products, not fixing things in a timely fashion, letting dogs swim, and not paying the pool man on time. Those are the answers. Here they are.